It's been a while, but we're going to continue our discussion on telco softwareization. So far, we have discussed many things, including SDX, the separation of the control plane and the data plane, and how, in a such a scenario, the data plane communicates with the control plane and what APIs are required. In today's video, we're going to discuss about how packet processing is really done in an SDN environment. There are three types of packet processing, namely reactive, proactive, and hybrid. We are going to look at a little bit deep how these things are done. Open flow packet processing. By the way, open flow is not the only southbound protocol that an SDN controller supports. There are multiple protocols, but we're trying to use open flow as an example to see how the packets are processed in an SDN environment. Now basically, there are three ways the packets can be processed. The first one is known as reactive, the second one is proactive, and there's a third one not very well known, but that is called hybrid. Now what is reactive packet processing? In reactive packet processing, the first packet of flow triggers the controller to insert a flow entry and then it actually uses the flow table quite efficiently and also every flow takes a small additional flow setup time because as you can understand the flow table is empty at the beginning. If the connection to the controller is lost, switch functionality is limited because in the reactive mode, the network element is fully dependent on the controller to get the required instructions. Now, if you look at the proactive packet processing, the flow table is pre-populated by the controller. So the tables are not empty. There are certain entries. One example could be if we really know exactly where the packets are to be forwarded in a network, we can pre-populate the instructions, the match criteria and the actions to be taken. For example, if you take a telecom network where all the broadband traffic is actually directed to a BRAS or Broadband Remote Access Server or a BNG, then it's a very simple instruction for the network elements in the network to where to forward the traffic. So the tables are pre-populated. And no additional flow setup time is required because the flow instructions are already there in the table. So you don't have to go and query from the network controller. And the traffic is not disrupted by the loss of control connection because uh, you really don't depend on a controller as such because of course the controller might help you to populate the tables at the very beginning but after that once the tables are there you really don't need the support of the controller and it essentially requires aggregated wildcard rules because you cannot there are so many tuples uh, in open flow there are multiple uh, five six or maybe 12 of them so you cannot have everything matched uh, in a practical environment so you possibly put multiple wildcards and match some things similar to let's say the destination if every every traffic is going to a particular destination you don't have to match the source or you don't have to match anything else so you just match the source if the source is this and this is the action to be taken and you put that one in the flow table and that's it now in the hybrid packet processing environment you have a mix of both reactive and proactive so maybe for certain flows you already have proactive uh, packet processing meaning that you have certain rules already available in the flow table but for certain other traffic you might not for very certain type of traffic you have but for 
very unpredictable traffic you actually go and query that from the controller now let's look at before getting into the main uh, processing types which is the reactive and proactive let's first look at the setup that we have now the setup is that we first have a network device in this case a network device with openflow enabled because openflow is the northbound protocol that we are going to use and of course even though we say the control plane is logically centralized in an SDN environment you still have two layers in the network device one is the software layer other one is the hardware layer now in the hardware layer you have your line cards and in line cards you have your ports in this case I'm taking an example where I have four ports port 1 up to port 4 and then you have multiple network devices like this in your network connected using your uh, connection uh, media and then you have your SDN control in the software layer of the open flow enable network device you have an agent and in this case it is the open flow agent and the open flow agent actually tries to communicate with the SDN controller so SDN controller understands open flow because of the open flow agent you can make the network device also to understand open flow as a protocol if you go and look at the hardware layer where actual uh, packets are handled and the packets are forwarded you have the open flow flow table and in the flow table you have different match criteria like you can match the source mac destination mac source ip destination ip source port tcp port tcp destination port etc and you can have an appropriate action defined for that so this is basically the setup and then the ports are actually connected to multiple hosts in this case i am taking an example where the hosts are just computers and for simplicity i am taking the ip addresses of these uh, couple of the hosts as the one connected to port 4 is 1.2.3.4 and the one connected to port 2 is 5.6.7.8 as you can have any ip address but uh, for simplicity i'm taking uh, the ip addresses like this so this is the setup that we have now let's look at in a situation where we use proactive packet processing in sdn how the total communication or the total communication happens in that sort of an environment now in a proactive scenario you have the flow table with at least one entry in this case I have one entry which says any packet coming with a destination IP 5.6.7.8 which is the computer connected to port 2 the action would be for the traffic to port 2 which is absolutely correct now if a packet comes from the host 1.2.3.4 which is connected to port 4 the destination address 5.6.7.8 that packet will be forwarded to port 2 and every packet coming to the destination 5.6.7.8 will be forwarded to port 2 whether it is coming from port 3, port 1, port 4, any other port in that line card or different other line cards uh, in the network device. So it's very simple. So you don't have to ask the SDN controller, you don't have to talk with the open flow agent. It's just a simple packet forwarding. Now take the reactive example now in this case 
you still have the same setup but notice that your flow table is now empty you don't have any entries in the flow table meaning that if a packet comes to the device via port 1 port 2 port 3 port 4 any other port the network device actually does not know what to do with that packet now take an example where a packet which is actually having a destination IP address of 5.6.7.8 which is connected to port 2 a packet comes from 1.2.3.4 going to 5.6.7.8 and since the table is empty the network device does not know what to do with that packet so what happens now is that the hardware layer actually communicates this situation to the open flow agent or rather open flow agent discovers this situation and then open flow agent actually communicates that to the SDN controller which is external to the network environment and then SDN controller based on the instructions given to the SDN controller by the upper layers maybe through an orchestrator maybe through uh, different other elements on top of the SDN controller gives the instructions to the open flow agent and then subsequently the open flow agent actually put the required flow entries into the flow table in this case there's a new flow entry added uh, with source MAC destination MAC source IP destination IP TCP port for source TCP port for destination and with the required action so in this case now even the first packet which was received by the network device when the flow table was empty is not lost it was buffered till the network device get the instructions from the screen controller even the buffered packet is now forwarded to port 2 that's what the instruction set says so when the packet 2 onwards received on port 4 destined to source address uh, 1234 going to destination IP 5678 the packet 2 onwards will be directly forwarded to port 2 because now you have the flow entry in the flow table so you from packet 2 onwards you don't have to go and ask from the SDN controller because the entry is already there so this is how the reactive packet processing happens and because of for the first packet to be forwarded we have a communication which is shown in red arrows uh, which actually goes from the hardware layer to the open flow agent in the software layer and the open flow agent communicates with the SDN control and for that there's a certain time but of course in today's network technologies these times are in the range of uh, microseconds so effectively you don't feel any delay in the practical scenario of forwarding packets so this is how reactive packet processing happens okay i hope now you understand what is reactive what is proactive and what is hybrid packet processing in sdn so we took the example of open flow as the node bound protocol for the network element and we explained these three scenarios so i hope to see you again in another video discussing another aspect of telco softwareization till then goodbye